Hello everybody, I'm going to do a review on this 64 ounce professional HVLP air spray gun kit I picked up from Harbor Freight. Now I have one of these already that I've had for two to three years I guess and I'm going to show it so I'm going to be bouncing a little bit all over the place comparing the old one to the new one see if there's any differences and I'll make note of those. Uh, this is item number 62895 and these retail for 60 bucks. 20% off coupon will yield you right at $48 plus tax. Not too bad. Now I've done another review on their non-HVLP version uh, that went back to the store. So this is not that review. I've been meaning to do this review for a couple of years. So let's get underway. Well, this is exactly the way it comes straight out of the box. It's actually packaged quite nicely. Of course, we've got two hoses here, the gun itself, the pressure pot, a wrench, the handle, a cleaning brush, and a fitting. And we're going to address all these individually as we move on. It also came with the manual, which is where I'm going to start, because I need to clear some things up in here, because anybody who reads this, they're going to get totally confused with how to use this gun. Secondly, if you do not know how to use a pressure pot setup like this, you need to do some reading and do some homework to figure out how to set it up. Now I'm going to show what I know about it and that's at least a good bounce off point. But if you've never used one of these, do some homework first or you'll probably will be dissatisfied. Alright, well this is just safety information right here, but there's one spec down here that you need to be mindful of and that is the air consumption. Uh, this thing wants 10 cubic feet per minute at 40 PSI, okay? So, you can't drive this with a little pancake compressor. I've driven mine with a 21-gallon Harbor Freight compressor, which I think it puts out 5.5 CFM at 90. I'm not sure what the 40 was. Now, I could paint, I was painting cabinets and cabinet doors and stuff like that, so there really wasn't a whole lot of trigger time all in one shot but be mindful you're not going to use a pancake for this now my compressor here uh, at my home is a 5 horse 60 gallon and it puts out I believe 12 CFM at 90 okay so I can drive this thing all day long my compressor of course will cycle but it will catch up because I'm delivering more CFM's than I'm consuming do some homework on that that's just something to note uh, okay, here's a basic setup, and this is similar to what I would use. Uh, they're showing the compressor, a ball valve, a length of hose. Uh, I believe that's a filter right there, which would trap oil particulate, oil mist. And then we move into a dryer setup here to remove moisture. And then into a regulator, a length of hose, and they show it connecting directly to the gun. This is not a bad setup. Not necessarily the one I use, but fairly close. Just pay heed to that because the last thing you want is moisture in your finishes. I'll cover a little bit more on the, my setup as I move along. Okay, this part right here, this diagram is just flat out wrong. It is showing the correct gun, but what they're noting here is not correct. Let me try to set this in here to where we can see everything in one shot. All right, first and foremost, this one right here. They're calling this the pattern control knob. It is not. That is your fluid control knob. That regulates how much fluid gets moved into the airstream, okay? They're calling this the fluid control knob right here. It is not. It is the air adjustment knob. And then they're calling this the air adjustment knob but it is not. It is your pattern control knob. That is what makes a round point out to a fan. That is this knob right here. I'm pretty sure I'm correct there. We'll know when we're doing some testing, but that is going to confuse a lot of people. Now looking at the tank itself, the air inlet is correct, the regulator is correct, the air outlet is correct. Right here, they're calling that the fluid flow knob. 
bring the tank in. This little knob right here. Hopefully that's showing up. That is not the fluid control knob. That is to relieve pressure off of the tank. They don't even show a ball valve here on the fluid outlet, but they have it marked correctly. This regulates or doesn't regulate. It sends fluid out to the gun, your paint, whatever you have in there. And the ball valve allows you to turn it off and turn it back on. Okay. Now, let me see here. They talk about cleaning. First off, they're saying that the wrench is not included. It is. We'll get into how to use that here momentarily as well. Uh, pretty much cleaning. They're saying, you know, use the spray gun cleaning kit sold separately. Damage. Okay. We're going to clean this and I'll show you how I would do it. Uh, the rest of it, this is probably not correct either. Adjust the air supply pressure during. Okay, okay. The air knob they're showing here, like I said, that is not the air knob. I'm just trying to be clear here. This is the air knob. Use the pattern knob to adjust the spray pattern. No. This isn't even the same gun. <laughs> this picture here is not even correct. I'm kind of going on and on about this, but I wanted to be clear. So they're talking about the pattern knob. This is the pattern knob. Okay, just remember that. I'm going to go over them one last time. This is your air adjustment. This is your fluid control, how much comes out into the airstream. And this is your fan pattern control right here. And then it goes into basic spraying techniques. It kind of goes into the cleanup, which I'll show my procedure, which is far superior to this in my opinion. It takes a while to clean up. Uh, some troubleshooting. Business like that. All right, well, here's my original setup here. I've got a short whip here. This was just a hose remnant from Harbor Freight. Cut off what I needed. Little clamp right here on the fitting that comes with it. I'm going to talk about this fitting a little bit more as we move along. Uh, I got this out because I needed to paint, and I was going over it last night, and I accidentally or it just broke I snapped the ball valve it just got fatigued over time I guess so from Harbor Freight they do sell quarter inch ball valves for like four dollars but it's only male on one side and female on the other and this obviously is a male male so they sell a two pack of these close nipples this is a three eighths but it comes with a three eighths and a quarter so I've made that back up on mine so I can put it back into service. Typically, right here, I use one of these inline air filters also from Harbor Freight. They seem to do a pretty good job. Uh, I must have stepped on this, dropped it, broke it or something. When I applied air, it just popped apart. This is the only part that was holding together right there. So it's just packed with I don't know, discs of cotton or something like that. So I'll need to get a new one, but that is part of my setup. The best thing you can do is zip tie these cables together or they'll be all over the place and you'll be tangled up into them. This is one addition to mine and I highly recommend this is to put a regulator right here at the gun. And I'll go over this here as we move along. Harbor Freight used to sell these that's where I got it. This is a true regulator. Whatever they sell these days, stay away from it. It's just more like a shutoff valve. It will reduce your pressure, but it will also reduce your volume. So pick one of these up, find them, whatever. Just make sure it's for a spray gun. Now I'm going to start busting this thing down, and we're going to do some old and new comparing and see what the differences are, if any. Alright, well I've got the old and the new side by side. I can only see a couple differences at first glance. One is the markings on this right here. The air adjustment. They're just a little bit different on one to the next. No big deal. Uh, there's actually an upgrade on this one. 
This fitting right here is stainless steel. On my old one, it was just chrome plated, probably brass, who knows. It's starting to rust a little bit here and there. Sticker fell off. <laughs> Already, that goes right there. Obviously that one's gone. Everything else looks pretty good. If this screw comes loose for any reason or if it's easy to get loose, put some blue Loctite on it. I had to do that with this one sometime back. It drove me crazy. It was constantly coming loose. The only complaint I had with this gun here uh, was the fan pattern. Not the pattern itself. The pattern was fine, but when you have it in this orientation, you should get a vertical fan. And then this way would be a horizontal fan. It blew the fan kind of at an angle about like this, so I would have to manipulate the cap to get a vertical fan or run it maybe something something like this to get a horizontal fan. No big deal, it was just a little annoying. I think the holes weren't drilled quite right. Let me look at this new cap. That one looks pretty good. Oh, these are way off. These are offset to this, uh, this right side quite a bit. Hopefully that won't be a problem, but it is what it is. It is a 1.4 tip. I have no trouble shooting latex out of this. Pull the caps off and take a quick peek at those and see if there's any detectable difference. They look pretty much identical to me. Like I said, there's oil on here. These holes around here help atomize the paint into droplets when it comes out. Uh, these almost look smaller, but there may be a film of oil in there. But anyway, no big deal. If you're going to take these apart, when you take the nozzle off, it needs to be clean. There's packing garbage everywhere. You don't want that in your finish. If you're going to take it off without removing the needle, pull back like this and then unscrew it. Or just simply take your needle out. I'm going to be cleaning it, so I'm taking that out anyway. So there's that with a spring. Pull it once, grab a hold of the needle, slowly twist it, pull it straight back so you don't bend it. And there we go. We'll investigate that a little more. Hopefully they didn't put this thing on with a cheater bar. We'll find out. Yeah, they did. They've got that thing jammed in there somehow. Ugh. God, man. I can't stand it when they do that. I need to get this off so I can clean it. So... I may have to put this in a vise or something and try to break that free. I shall return. Man, they had that thing on there. I wrapped a towel around here and stuck it in my vise and was able to get it loose. When you tighten these up, bring it up snug. Get a hold of it like this. That's all you need. No sense in needing 200 foot-pounds. To get that thing loose that's how it should break loose right there there shouldn't be any goop gluing this in there's not just some oil on the threads some dings on the front of that from something <laughs> don't know but that's as far as I take it down to do any cleaning for that matter I will be cleaning this out with mineral spirits. Use whatever you like, but not like caustic solvents like lacrothin or anything like that that might destroy the O-rings. Everything will get cleaned up. Take a peek at this needle here. A little bit of goo on the end of it that I'll make sure I get off. Stainless steel. I'll call that a ferrule brass ferrule on it looks like the old one so these components will go through that bath 
while I'm here some people complain about leaking back here paint way down in there I doubt you'll be able to see it but you can put a flat blade screwdriver in there and tighten it ever so slightly little by little and check it and you can tighten up the packing on this and it will not leak I did have to do this once on this one after many hours of use tighten it up a little bit no problem all right everything is squeaky clean and ready to go back together I did do a preemptive strike though see his little eclipse right here they were quite loose on the shafts so I took them off squeezed them ever so slightly with a pair of pliers and put them back on so now they're tight that way they will not just drop off while in use so let's go back together simply going to start out with the nozzle like I said all it takes start in with the needle and this one right here you have to turn it just right and get the needle through the hole slowly spin it and push it in there we go spring followed by the adjuster on the back now there's tension on this the way I do it is like so I hold it like this push down with my finger and start threading that in until it catches there we go now to do an initial set off point and get full volume you pull the trigger all the way back and then bring this in I was already there start turning this in until you just hit that trigger and it moves just a little bit and there it is full trigger and you can lock this down there we go put on the air cap And that's it all right well I did want to mention that this is a two-stage trigger and what that means is if you pull it back it'll go fairly easily until you hit right there and what that does in the first stage is it opens up the air to go ahead and start coming out the front of the gun and then when you get into the portion up here where it starts letting the fluid in it's ready to be atomized right when it hits the airstream so it won't spit and things like that like like an airless for example you can theoretically start on the work and start applying your material down all right well the pots are pretty much identical the only difference I can see is I've got a wider ceiling surface on my old one than the new one uh, basically from my thumbnail to fingernail on this one you can see how wide that is and on this one quite a bit thinner hopefully that won't create a problem sealing things up all right well I'm gonna go ahead and install this carry handle or hang hook here and then we're gonna compare the old versus the new just take it down as far as it will go I personally like mine like this so the hoses and everything are out of the way and I can hook it on run this jam nut up Let's see if I can do this and there we go all right well there are a couple of differences between the two the regulators are the same mainly this bleed right here where you could relieve pressure out of the tank this one has a needle on the end of it and down in there is an o-ring and it comes in at an angle and I like that because it's with all the hoses and whatnot on here it's still easy enough to get your fingers in here and get a hold of that the new one is a little bit different 
it comes straight down and it does have an o-ring but it is not like a needle and seat see the o-ring on the end there it's down in a little groove and it just bears on the bottom of this bore it should work just fine it's just like I said when all the hoses are on here it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to but I'll manage with that everything else looks to be the same of course the ball valve's different because I just replaced mine all right well taking a peek at the bottom side you see this threaded hole right here this actually was smaller originally and this pipe had threads on it and this was actually a complaint of mine there was no shoulder they just stopped right here and over time they were never tight to begin with but they get loose so I would put Teflon tape around there to seal that up you want your fluid coming up from the bottom you don't want air pushing in through here so I actually just repaired this today I took that hole out to a quarter inch national pipe thread right here and this end right here I turned the threads off and took a little bit of the diameter off of this tube and what you're looking at right here in essence was one of these but a quarter inch I bored the inside out about down to the midpoint here and inserted that in here and then I used 45 percent silver solder because I am going from brass to steel cutting the galvanizing off and brazed it outside so that's my permanent repair and I like that and I did like the ability and do like the ability to take this tube out because it's easier to clean everything on the inside so now that's positive it won't leak and there we go now this check valve here I'm calling it a check valve but I don't really think it's a check valve when the air comes into the tank this is where it enters I'm going to go ahead and pull this out there is a seal beneath it down in there and you can see it's spring loaded on the back and it will raise up like this I believe this is more so if you tip the tank over accidentally or knock it over it prevents your material from getting up into the regulator and that has happened to me before I take it apart clean it there's a little screw right there you can just take it apart and clean it put it back together and stick it back in this is not cooperating with me there we go now on to the new one we've got the same type of pipe here it is a thinner wall it's got a larger ID I'm not sure about the OD they look the same but you can see this is like DOM here I'm not sure what this is but it is not threaded in here now it might be threaded but they've used some kind of resin or whatnot to glue that in there permanently which may not be a bad thing it's certainly not going to leak a little bit more difficult to clean but we can work with that uh, this as well I cannot get it out it may have some sealer of some sort on there uh, if I ever need to clean that in the future then I'll make sure I can get that out but that's really the only two differences between the at least the top portion of the pressure pot all right well this pressure relief valve right here says on the top max 45 psi basically what that's for is if you get too much pressure in your pot it will pop this off and relieve that pressure so it doesn't blow up you should never run anywhere near that in the pot I don't know where this is set but that's what it is but I am going to go ahead and do another preemptive strike which is right here on this nut on the top of this ball valve these things on these cheap ones especially they're notorious for getting loose so I'm gonna fix it right now and it will never be a problem for me simply take the nut off 
Put a little bit of blue thread locker on here. Let that run around. Stick it back on, tighten it up. There we go. Problem solved before it was a problem. All right, well, I'm going to take a look at the hoses themselves, starting with my old ones. Now, like I said, this is between two and three years old, I would guess. And they're still pliable when I bend them like this. There's no cracking revealing it. Nothing like that. The trick to this is keep them out of the sunlight. They've been in the heat, they've been in the cold, no problems at all. These are still good. And if they do break down in time, you can find a set online. I doubt you can get them from Harbor Freight. But the new hoses, nice and pliable, same scenario here. Now I want to talk a little bit about the connections. The black hose, which is the fluid hose, you can see there's a large one and a small one. The large one goes on the gun here. You can only put it one way, obviously. And the small one goes on the outlet from the tank. But, people get things like this, and they try to put just a regular coupler on here, and they leak. And they leak because this is not the right style to go on this. Now I've done this before. You have to put a lot of Teflon tape around here and build it up and you can get it to quit leaking. But they're actually designed more like this. This one, for example, would go on this gun. Tighten up and it's already tight. I can't turn this. So that's a good connection. No Teflon required. The shape may be a little bit different. Like this end, for example, is more bulbous. I can't pick it up, but it's a little bit more bulbous. And you see this little cone in here? That's where this will fit up and become a nice tight connection. So just understand when you get these things, you get them like this. These are specific, I guess, to you know spray rigs, but I just don't know what that fitting is called. You can do something like this. Like I said, I've done it, but it takes a lot of tape to get these things to seal and be airtight. All right, well, let's make up the hose connections. I'm going to start here with this regulator. I will explain why this is here later on as the video progresses, I promise. But, I'm just going to kind of get it lined up and get it tightened up off to the side. I like mine sticking directly off the side. I may have to do this a couple of times. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with the red hose, which is the airline. And it does not matter which end you put on here. This is just the one I'm going to use. Tighten that up. You can use this wrench. It's just a little cumbersome. And then finally, the fluid line goes here. That's a little larger. I don't think I have a wrench for it. I do not. Let's see if there's one on this gizmo that will fit. Well, yeah, look at that. Okay. And there you go. That's that. I'm going to start connecting these with zip ties down their length, and then I'll terminate them on the pressure pot when I get down that far. Alright, well I've got the cable ties on my hoses. I'm going to put the fluid line on. It goes onto the ball valve right here. Get it snug and tighten it up. 
there we go. The air line is a little bit longer than the fluid line, so I'm just going to make a loop right here and install it. Snug this up. There you go. Alright, we're down to the last connection. This fitting here that it comes with technically does go right here. And it's barbed on this end. That is the correct type of fitting for this right here. Now, you can use one of these and put a coupler on it. But, you will have to use a lot of Teflon tape to get that to seal up like I would mentioned before. Now I do not have another length of hose so I'm just simply using the one off my old rig for now. I'll get another length and make one up so I'm not switching these back and forth but it's just simply a hose clamp. Slide it up on there and tighten it up and give that a little bit and here is my quick disconnect I did happen to find one of these rolling around in my trailer so I will be installing this right in here that's the way I normally do it alright well I've hooked it up to air to leak check it and the only problem I had was right here in this fitting it was not the hose end, it was the actual fitting in the regulator itself. Uh, these are NPS fittings, National Pipe Straight, by the way, as opposed to National Pipe Tapered. So, I do not know if they're really specific to this, but just something to note. So, I've actually got mine hooked up to 100 pounds of inlet pressure right now, set at the regulator coming from my compressor. I'm ignoring everything on this label. That's the way I run mine. This is backed all the way off. The fluid is closed. And the tank relief valve is closed as well. Now this regulator, this is why I run a regulator right here. Because you can regulate the incoming air pressure from your compressor regulator but you really don't know how much pressure is right here at the gun or more importantly up here at the tip. So I like running this regulator and right now this one's out so this is kind of how I, st I start working with this. Of course obviously I fill it up with the material I'm going to use but I'm just going to go through a mock-up right here. So right now I've got this regulator dialed all the way out to nothing. Uh, it's not reading zero on my gauge for some reason, but we're going to go with it anyway. I'm going to try to get this to where you can see it. When you adjust the pressure, you always adjust it with your trigger pulled. So I'm going to pull the trigger and I'm going to slowly bring this up to 25 pounds. Okay, so that's basically 25 pounds with the trigger pulled that's what you want 25 30 somewhere around in there I always start at 25 with my gauge not being on zero I may actually have to take this up to 30 or 35 on the gauge I'll play with it later so you can see it's down here trigger pull that's where I start this valve here that regulates air I leave it wide open if you're not using this you could do it right here, but you still have no idea what's going on up there. So you can hear it change. So that's on. My fluid dial is, I pulled it all the way back and then brought it in until it just started to move. So that's flu, full fluid right there. You don't have to run it full. You can dial it in, squeeze it partially. And this fan adjustment, I'll play with it after we get some fluid going through it. So on the tank right here, this regulator only regulates what's going into the pot. It does not do anything. This is a straight through feed to right here. So 
whatever you set this is, is in this line. So if you set this at 40, it's 40 right here. This regulates what goes into the tank. So the next thing I do is I bring this up, not very much, just two or three pounds. It depends. I set this just high enough to get the fluid to come out of the tip without sputtering. You don't want it too high. You just want it high enough. So I'm going to start bringing this in. And I'll just bring it up to, I'm going to call that five pounds right there, which is probably more than what I ever use. I probably use about three pounds. So now we've got a pressurized tank. When you're ready to start shooting, you can open up your fluid valve here. That's open. And now it will put that fluid out to the tip. And just for grins, I'm going to see how high this regulator will actually take it. It says 45 max on this pop-off, but I don't think it's going to get there. Now, mind you, I've got 100 coming in, so there's no way it won't do that if it's available. So it looks like it goes up to about 32 pounds. Okay, so that's well within the range. I doubt you would ever need to do anything like that. So I'll back this off, and you can see it resting back down. There's a little bleed hole where it's coming out. It'll take it a minute to get it back down to 5. Let me help it out. I'm going to open up this one here. Just to let some of that pressure off. Okay, now I'll dial it back up to 5. Okay, about like that. Okay, well I filled the pot up about halfway just with water so I can do a leak check and we're going to test the functionality of it. I'll have to take it outside to do that, but this is just a mock-up or a rundown on how I would go about doing this. Uh, strain your product, whatever, get it in here. Go ahead and install it here. Okay, right now the fluid control is off. This valve is currently loose, but the first thing you do is ensure that that is tightened up right there. Regulator's backed all the way off, as well as the one on my gun. Now I'm going to apply some pressure to it. So I've just hooked it up to my airline. I'm going to leave this off, especially in here, but I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, hold the trigger and bring this up to around 25 pounds. There we go. And at this point I'm going to go ahead and put some pressure in my tank, like I said, just a couple pounds. That's probably about two pounds right there is all I've got in it. At this point I'll open this up and it should start flowing material out the front. But like I said, I kind of need to set up outside for this. Alright, well I brought it outside. Hopefully this is going to show up. Now this is the point in your project where you would start testing your fan patterns and dial it into how you want on a piece of cardboard or some paper or whatnot. So hopefully this fan will show up. I've got it turned the fan all the way up, I believe. That's a big fan. Now I'm going to roll this dial back and you'll see the fan kind of close up. So that would do like a circle. That's way too much material. At this point you would dial this in. You have to play back and forth. The wider the fan, more material you can put out. Smaller the fan, less material. Or you'll just have a big blob. So let me do that real quick. 
I'll just turn it all the way down. Went the wrong way. So now I'll start dropping my material off. Now you can see I'm just fine mist. A little bit more. Open it up. You get the idea. What I'm doing now is checking it around here. Water is the hardest thing to keep in things, so if it's going to leak, it's going to leak with water. Looks like I may see a little bit. I may need to tighten that packing nut just a little bit, but it may not do that with paints. Anyway, there you go. Okay, well I wanted to mention something. I was talking about only having so much pressure in this pot and there's a true reason for that. You can crank this thing up to 30 pounds and it is going to send the fluid out so fast you're not going to have enough air volume to atomize it and fan that paint out. So that's why you know you only use just enough pressure in this tank to get it to flow out to the tip and that gives you the controls you need here so it's kind of a balancing act play around with it you'll get it also on this regulator after you get it dialed in you can lock it down with this little thing here but let's move on to cleaning it's still hooked up let's just say I finished the job the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the air pressure I'm going to turn my regulator all the way down to where it's loose and now I'm going to bleed the pressure off this tank don't just open this thing up or you'll have a paint bomb on your hands. All right. I'm also going to shut the fluid valve. Those are the three things. Now, since this is loose, I can open this up. And anything that's still in the tube, let it drain back into the container as best as you can. It's obviously going to be thicker than this. And then take the material, discard it, put it back into your container. This is the way I do it. I put it back into my paint can. Get the most of it out. And then I put this back on. Alright, closing the valve. Now I'm going to apply the air pressure back to it. And there's one other thing that I do, which is why I like this regulator. I'm going to back this all the way off because we're going to pump the fluid out that's in this line back into our container. So I'm going to remove the air cup as well. Okay. I'm going to open up my port again to let the fluid control, fluid flow. And then I'm going to bring up just a little bit, but I'm going to do that while I'm squeezing this trigger. So the only air that's going to come out is through here. So I'm bringing it up just a little. And you can see it's going back into the container. And you'd be surprised the volume that's in this length of hose, which I believe is only about four feet long. So I'll just let this run until I clear this hose of the majority of what's in there. little bit more okay so now we're out close the valve again turn my regulator back disconnect my inlet pressure relieve the pressure off the tank this is the point where I would clean this out and then fill it up with whatever solvent you need to use water mineral spirits whatever ammonia in my case when I'm shooting shellac 
and then put it back together. Set it back up like you would spray and run that fluid through here until it runs clear. You may have to do it a couple of times and then run it all through. Then at that point, we're pretty much done with this tank. Except for one thing. <clears throat> I do take a bore brush like this and I'll actually clean all the way up in this tube. On my old one, this tube came out so it was a lot easier. I'll clean as much out of there as I can. Get it super clean. Check here for paint. You don't want any paint here. Check here. Clean this area. And then this, like I said, if it tips over accidentally, you may need to take this out or lift it up a little bit and clean underneath that. That pretty much is this end. Fighting hoses and whatnot. So let's see here. Then we move on to the gun. I remove these hoses. A little long and drawn out, but this is what I do. All right, so now we're down to the gun. We've already got the air cap off. So it will get cleaned. I'm going to pull the trigger, take this off, clean the needle, clean all this stuff with a toothbrush, solvent. I'll pull the nozzle off the front. And I clean as best as I can down in here in these two areas, usually with a pipe cleaning brush like this get in there, whatever you can get in there, and clean it up. Then everything gets blown off with compressed air. I'll blow through here, I'll blow all this out, I come up through the air fitting holding the trigger, I spray through here, get this clean, everything gets cleaned off and then this gets reassembled once it's dry. On this part here, I'll actually open up the fluid nozzle and I spray through right here with compressed air to blow any remaining water out of here to dry this line. The airline should have no water in it. Blow off my fittings, put everything back together, and it's ready for the next town. Alright, well it's getting dark on me and I wanted to go ahead and try to shoot this panel here. My camera's quite a ways back. but. I'm going to fire it up and see how it goes.
not bad at all. I know I need to dial it in a little bit more. I'm rushing here, but it shoots pretty good. I was using a Zenzer, the Ben shellac based primer, just an FYI. All right, guys. Well, I realized that clip I shot last night, you know, at dusk was not a good representation. I'm really showing how well the gun shot. I wasn't going to get anywhere close to it. I did quite a bit of spraying after that clip. Just a headlamp out in the yard shooting shellac based primer. No problems. Uh, I did tighten up this packing nut before I loaded up the gun with material. I failed to mention that. Just a little bit. If yours is leaking and you do tighten that up, you can't tighten it up too much because if you do, it will slowly seat up here and it'll end up dribbling and it may not shut off all the way. So if you're dribbling out of the end of the nozzle right here, you might actually back it off a little bit. It may be too tight. Just from my experience with using this, this gun actually shot better than the other one. I don't think it had anything to do with the tank. I think it had mainly to do with that air cap being kind of jacked up on it. The reason I like this is it's a small, compact unit. It's not too terrible to clean, but it takes some time. But I use this to paint on the project I bought it for with some kitchen cabinet carcasses, doors, and stuff like that. And unlike a gravity-fed gun, you can get in and shoot any direction, more like an airless, but you don't have to go as fast with an airless, and you have more control with a gun like this. You can paint large projects with it, even houses and whatnot, but it's going to take you a long time constantly mixing it up. For projects like that, I break out my airless. I do have gravity fed guns that I'm kind of retiring. I don't really grab them much anymore. As for using this for an automotive spray finish application or stains or polyurethanes or you know whatever lacquers and stuff like that. I've never used it for it. I've only used two products through this. The Zinzer Bin Shellac Base Primer which I was using last night and Sherwin Williams I can't remember what it's called. It's escaping me. It's their cabinet paint. Pro Classic. Pro Classic. Does great on both of those. I'm completely satisfied with this. I kind of got this set up because I didn't know if my repairs were actually going to work. I had my wife pick them up on the way home and said, just bring me a new gun. So this is going to be my main gun. I may dedicate the other one to just shooting primer or other things like that. But... Check them out. Your mileage may vary with some of this stuff, but I'm completely satisfied with it. Have been for many years. Thanks for watching, guys, and good luck.